the Chinese Communist Party has fiercely assaulted the American judicial system, while most Americans slept. The five-year legal battle between Pax and Miles Gould goes far beyond an ordinary debt collection, and becomes a battleground for defending American justice free from the CCP's interference. Protecting Americans' judicial independence is the responsibility of the American people. We are the new Chinese who are taking down the CCP, and we are here to help. The plaintiff and creditor, Pax PAX Pacific Alliance Asia Opportunity Fund, is a subsidiary of Pax PAG. Pacific Alliance Group, headed by Shen Weijian, a CCP-registered spy with a public persona of a successful venture capitalist and a seasoned executive, representing Pax PAX is the international law firm O Malbany, one of the first U.S. law firms to set up in Communist China, and was just awarded a top practice in Communist China in June 2022. The defendant, debtor Miles Guo, the seventh son of a poor rural family with eight boys. At age 13, he's already made fortunes with his various business adventures. At age 19, he was persecuted by the CCP for providing financial aid to the 1989 June 4th student movement, but survived the 22 months torture at the Qingfeng Detention Center. In 2015, he fled China and started the whistleblower movement. In 2017, Mr. Guo's truth-telling broadcastings have awakened hundreds of millions of Chinese from the mind-controlling spells the CCP has cast on its people and the world. Hence, he became the most formidable enemy of the CCP. Let's start with the scandalous incident that occurred most recently in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court District of Connecticut on June 15, 2022. The court issued a memorandum of decision granting the United States trustee UST's motion for the appointment of a Chapter 11 trustee. Fifteen days later, on June 30th, 2022, the UST filed a notice appointing Joe D. Whitley as Chapter 11 trustee in an application for seeking the court's approval of the appointment of Whitley as Chapter 11 trustee. On July 5th, 2022, the day of the scheduled hearing of Whitley's appointment. UST notified the court that it would withdraw the application for the appointment of Whitley as the Chapter 11 trustee. What was supposed to be an appointment hearing of Whitley becomes a heated 39-minute debate between the judge and the UST on if the UST should have followed the procedure outlined in the bankruptcy code in removing Whitley, who at the time of this hearing had signed an affidavit under penalty of perjury declaring his disinterestedness. Despite the judge's inquiry, the U.S.D. attorney Holly Claiborne asserted that the U.S.D. has the governmental privilege and does not need to discuss or explain how the U.S.D. selects a trustee. Nevertheless, Claiborne emphasized the need for the U.S.D. to select and install an individual who can be impartial to all parties in the July 5th hearing. Only two days later, on July 7th, 2022. The U.S.T. filed a notice appointing Luke A. Despens, a partner at Paul Hastings LLP, as Chapter 11 trustee, and an application seeking the court's approval of the appointment. Like O. Malvany, Paul Hastings has a significant and active presence in Communist China. Upon obtaining this news, Mr. Guo posted on Getter on the same day, stating that Paul Hastings is a long-term partner of Peg, the plaintiff Peg's parent company in China. And Luke A. Despens is not a disinterested person. This news rattled many followers of the whistleblower movement, who shortly after Miles' post located a shocking amount of evidence online about the close tie Paul Hastings has with PAG and the Chinese Communist Party. The next day, July 8, 2022, Luke A. Despens attended the hearing of his appointment and conveniently told the judge his earlier admission, Paul Hastings' representation of PAG Peg. The followers of the whistleblower movement were furious at the time, and they turned their emotions into actions. They dug deeply into this matter and exposed more findings on social media. Probably under pressure, on July 12, 2022, Luke A. Despens filed his first supplemental declaration of disinterestedness, in which he declared that Paul Hastings represented certain entities that share a common parent with Pax Pax. He did not disclose any details regarding those representations, other than to state that they were in unrelated matters. Why did the U.S.T. approach the two trustees, Whitley and Despens, differently? In Whitley's case, the U.S.T. perceived the purported conflict and immediately withdrew Whitley, ignoring the removal process outlined in the bankruptcy code, as well as the fact Whitley and his firm were not directly involved in the conflict. In Despens' case, the late rising conflict relates to the Pax parent company, Peg. 
and the UST moved forward with the appointment at lightning speed. Not to mention that the UST willfully ignored the undue influence that the Chinese government maintains over Paul Hastings by controlling its ability to do business in China and Hong Kong. Why did the UST hastily select the second trustee in just two days? Why it failed its first decision, made over 15 days from June 15th to 30th? In the next episode, we will share critical information about this case and the CCP's presence and interference in the American judicial system so you can get closer to the bottom of these questions.